gospel is the power of God unto salvation. The of God does not condemn. Back in the power of God. God love with you. you. The end of the, the world. Lord do not God. want our past. this morning we're going to open our bible to the book of psalm chapter 23 verse 4 to 10 psalm 23 verse 4 to 10 i believe we are all there we are going to read together yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod, your staff, they comfort me. Verse 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my air with oil. My cups runs over. Verse 6. Surely goodness and mercy 
shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you Christ in Corona, a continuation of what we started this special welcoming program. Mighty God of heaven, we thank you. The entrance of your word giveth light and understanding to the simple. As your word proceed this morning from this altar, please let me be the first person to be blessed by this message. And it goes along to bless your children. So that we can all be blessed together. May you God impregnate us again. For a destiny that no man, no devil can hinder. Thank you, Father. Jesus' name we've all declared. Can you have your seat confidently? Are you here with me this morning? This morning we want to pray. And we minister the word just the same way we did on Friday. And uh, in our retreat program, we're going to just share the word. As the word is going line by line, as the Lord inspires my heart, we will be led into praying. We we'll pray just shortly, and then we we'll go back to sitting down, and then the work continues. I will see how the Holy Spirit takes us in this. Hallelujah! Yes, yes. Uh, on f that, that was on Friday, right? I was talking about yesterday. Uh, on Friday, we talk about the Christ in corona and that way around it means christ in covid 19. hallelujah i will said another word for covid or corona could be disaster all right we said corona now uh, definitely a lot of viruses that have invaded the whole world right from ages but this happened to be a novel virus I was given a special definition COVID-19 uh, probably because it actually gets kicked off in around end of uh, last year 2019. That's why the 19 is there. I was said a novel coronavirus, a new coronavirus that has not been previously identified and its attack could easily lead to death. The virus, we said, uh, a, a, a special disease it's not just ordinary disease and it's not just ordinarily contagious it's actually pandemic right praise the lord it has not come to under human control so at this time now it is dangerously pandemic hallelujah it's not like the common one that we've had, we had before in the past now we talk about Christ we said in the Hebrew word, the word Christ means Christos, right? If I have the correct pronunciation in my mouth, Christos. And then the meaning of Christos is the anointed one. Everybody say the anointed one. I want that to sound in your mouth confidently. The anointed one. All right, that's why we're here today. Praise the Lord, the anointed one. So Christ, the anointed one. Now, when we say Christ in Corona, we say Christ in COVID-19, then we say Christ in Corona means Christ in disaster. Hallelujah. Christ in a situation where no man can help. Hallelujah. In a situation where we are all helpless. Christ in Corona means all that. Now, let's for that go deeper so really if you are to apply this into our real life christ in covid 19 will mean the anointed one in covid 19 christ will do what christ will do in covid 19 the attitude of christ in covid 19 the action of christ in covid 19 the intention of Christ in COVID-19. The 
expectation of the anointed one in COVID-19. So we're going to break all this down. We, of course, made mention of about three points on Friday. And we're going to continue from there. We said the first one, Christ in our Corona means realizing and accepting that God is a ready help, a refuge in time of trouble. And I will quote Psalm 46 verse, verse 1. I'm not going there now. Just for the purpose of those who are not with us on Friday. Then number two, we say Christ in our Corona means we must come out of our bubble and be joined with our brethren. We went ahead and quoted James chapter 5 verse 14 to 16. And then we say the third point, we say Christ in Corona means since there is no anointing one without anointing so christ in our corona means the anointing can help us to know things on what to do in this very trying difficult time hallelujah now today i'm going to the fourth point hallelujah so the fourth point says christ in our covid disaster means our abiding in the secret place makes the anointing to keep us under God's shadow. Hallelujah. Everybody say God's shadow. It means we are desperate to call upon the Lord. And of course, obviously, what secret place means communication, intercession, and talking with God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. In the book of Luke chapter 22, verse 39. Luke chapter 22, verse 39. I'm going to read from here up to 46. Coming out, he went to the Mount of Olives, and as he was accustomed, and his disciple also followed him. Verse 40. When he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that your, you may not enter into temptation, and that he with, was withdrawn from them about a stone throw and he knelt down and prayed 42 saying father if it is your will take this cup away from me nevertheless not my way but yours be done 43 then an angel appeared to him from heaven strengthening him and being in agony he prayed more earnestly then his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground 45 when he rose up from prayer and had come to his disciples he found them sleeping from sorrow 46 then he said to them why do you sleep rise and pray lest you enter into temptation so Christ in corona and covid 19 we mean that the christ expectation is that we pray whenever disaster comes around what christ will instruct his disciple is to pray hallelujah ever said to pray of course of course what is prayer A prayer means communication with god you can talking about communication you can only communicate with somebody i mean communication people can talk but communication is another level it may have been that maybe you are a friend to someone i mean if you have a husband and wife at home and they can communicate that might be a kind of not a good good sign of a healthy uh relationship hallelujah so communication has to go back and forth you speak to god and god return reply everybody say god return reply so God is interested not only we speaking to him, God is interested in he in we giving him room to talk to us back. So in this disaster, what God expects of us, Christ in COVID, is that we are engaging him in communication. We open our door wide. The prayer we have never said before, this is the time such prayer should be said. The level of communication we have not entered into before. This is the time we should 
enter into that level of communication we've not gotten a prayer partner before this is the time to get one for yourself god want to have us talk sometimes god introduce difficult situations because our mouth have been closed for long so because of that he want our mouth to be opened amen of course when you have a little baby and the baby won't cry after it's been delivered you know the first thing first they will do to a baby after it's been delivered is to quickly carry the baby the baby will be crying i quickly carry the baby up to the mother and put the baby towards the suckling and if the baby refused to suckle and if it's not crying then that's a very bad sign there hallelujah so god expects us as, as his childlike children to be able to pray amen to cry unto him say cry unto me i will answer you things that you have never experienced in your life i will show you god is not a close-mouthed god as some of us think he said i know my sheep and my sheep knows me he said they hear my voice when i speak they hear my voice and sometimes in this situation like this some of us maybe have been turning deaf ear over years but god need to shake us up to open our ears to hear him god might introduce this whole situation because he wants us to have a line of communication everybody say line of communication so we are in this situation because god wants us to open our mouth it is not a time to start describing how difficult covid 19 is it is not a time to start explaining over explaining the disaster in covid 19 but god is calling on attention hallelujah after all god created the whole world for his own praise we want everyone to shout his name aloud and offer praise of him. he said my glory my honor will i not share with any man not even the graven image so god is a jealous god in the book of exodus god is jealously requesting that our mouth be open when i have a child in the house and he can't open his mouth and ask for what he wants most of the time i will ignore the child amen most of the time in assumption i will just either consciously or consciously i will be tempted to ignore that kind of child so this time god wants us to open our mouth hallelujah everybody say, open your mouth you know what devil does one of the time is to keep us shut down see get us to ruminate on the difficulties of this time and then shut our emotion down Amen. hallelujah and our emotion has been created by god to respond to god Amen. everything that is created in us are meant to respond to god's praise and so if we now divert our emotion to explaining the difficulties looking at the mountain rather than looking unto jesus the author and the finish of our faith god get jealous hallelujah so the overall essence of having this to happen is defeated amen may that not be defeated in our life in jesus name it's not time to start complaining and yelling around it is time to yell at god amen Everything yell at god say cry unto me amen. yell at god let not our yelling be towards men let our yelling be towards god that man that day he was pronounced going to be dying and the man went face the wall and cried unto God he yelled at God oh you know what kind of son you have I have I stood before you in your presence as time to defend faith how come you are going to make a judgment of death I do not deserve to die and God told his prophet turn around go back and tell him hallelujah Ezekiah he will not die anymore his death has been prolonged till 15 years hallelujah praise the lord are you here this morning you are in this difficult situation god is using this moment to wake us up amen I say, wake me up rise up on your feet and pray this prayer today whatever is standing me and making me to be backward standing against my progress 
and making me to be backwards in my relationship with you today i am submitting them to you right now i am submitting them to you right now whatever is standing on my way i am using them to you right now i can understand that this whole scenario is meant for you to get my attention to talk to you to praise you to talk about your goodness unto me lord today whatever is standing on my way and distracting me from this reasoning in the name of jesus let them bow thank you father in jesus name we have declared i told us last have you seen i told us last friday when a child wants to talk to his parents he has to talk confidently everybody say confidently but say there's no yeah for no condemnation for those who are in christ jesus who walk not after the flesh you not know, walking after the suggestion of the mind of the brain hallelujah but walk after the spirit of god inside his own spirit hallelujah so we have the right to enter into god's court confidently and obtain mercy hallelujah so when i ask us to stand and pray we go to pray it until we feel peace in our heart hallelujah i feel peace in my heart because the response the litmus test for god responding to your prayer is the first peace you got in your heart hallelujah prayer does much more than getting god to give us cookies a prayer get us sanctified everybody say get us sanctified prayer open us up to child likeness everybody say child likeness when god see our total dependence on him he is excited he's excited hallelujah he is excited that's the way he made us he made us to be like that amen and david said i was glad when it was said unto me let us go to the house of god what is he going to do there to speak to god to talk to god to commune with god god is very jealous and i keep asking myself a question why is this the same prayer every morning i want that prayer in the afternoon <laughs> the prayer on the way the prayer in the night every day sometimes you look at the elements of your prayer they are all similar <laughs> but you keep wondering what is it that i need why am i praying all this prayer only to one God. <laughs> Hallelujah. That day. I'm so jealous about having me open my mouth. Hey, my friend. It is not about the prayer content itself. It's about the total dependence that God is seeing. That we are depending on Him. Are you here with me? That crying like a baby. It makes God want to do far beyond your reasoning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. If your child can't talk to you, then you you think the child doesn't need you Amen. that's what it is praise the lord it doesn't matter he asked for me for food yesterday he's still going to ask me for food tomorrow you see the same request amen hallelujah even though the food is automatic amen but i still need in the book of ezekiel 36 37 he said i will still require the house of israel to ask me to do all this that i've stated for them why is he requiring that hey my friend god is a jealous god come on god is a jealous god everybody god is a jealous god psalm 91 verse 1 psalm 91 verse 1 he who dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty i will say of the lord he is my refuge and my fortress my god in him i will trust so when we stand in communication in secret place with god what happens jesus said he said your father who had your word in secret shall reward you in the open now look at the reward fortress amen i was a fortress look at the reward refuge it means god is going to protect you all it takes for him to keep us being attacked with this disease 
he knows how to take care of it so wait wait a bit you will ask me questions say what is he talking about what about those who have been dying already so wait a bit your destiny is different from every other one's destiny you may ever say that my destiny is different from every other person's destiny i was looking unto jesus the author and the finisher of your faith he said they that compare themselves with themselves are not wise that's all scripture so so business with god is a vertical revelation what a relationship with god so god expects us to be focused you know the sovereignty of god controls the affairs of men without asking for permission amen he can decide to take one away and bring one down that's what god does but when it comes to us it is not our duty to put that into reasoning amen with our brain mind of our brain the flesh the flesh reside here this is where the holy ghost reside amen hallelujah the holy ghost baptizes your heart baptizes your spirit it doesn't stay in your head the head can never be born again i would say the head cannot be, cannot be born again the head of human being is the only place in human being it control every other affair of the physical body is the area that is not going to be born again and we are told in the book of galatians there are two nations the flesh and the spirit he said these two war against each other galatians chapter five so that you cannot do what you want to do hallelujah so it's possible for a christian to march out of here and suddenly become non-christian why it's in line the head engagement when we engage with the flesh it turns us to be unbeliever immediately hallelujah but when we engage with the spirit that's upon your feet it makes us available to god everything will start changing whatever it is in my life today that will not agree with god today i cast them out whatever it is in my life that will not agree with god's presence i subdue them in the name of jesus christ come on pray confidently god is your father you are not a slave you are god's child god's daughter god's son god enjoys your communication come on come on come on say that to god god is here to hear you god is here to hear you he is your god he is your father he can't wait for you to open your mouth he loves you whatever it is in my life that will render me unconnected with your spirit with your presence today i subdue them in jesus name we have the prayer have your seat that prayer content is scriptural because paul said i put myself under what do you think is putting under the flesh amen the what the flesh let's after i've done all this i missed the mingle subduing is a daily walk hallelujah a daily walk psalm 120 verse 1 in my distress i cried unto the lord and he heard me see sometimes this man may have been crying to god god was not listening to him until distress came what do you think is the difference between the time of distress and the time he was calling upon god that god was not as hearing him as much as when he was in distress what the difference the difference is the attention that god got from him hallelujah hallelujah what, what do i say the attention god got from him so try tribulation sometimes disaster tends to ad address our attention before god so let us not be afraid about what is going on in the world hallelujah god has a plan amen god god in this whole situation has a plan but one thing we cannot do is to close our mouth and refuse to be shy like sometimes our prayer content is too is too mature than god and what god we expect uh, we, we present us we already giving god's idea on the way to hear the prayer <laughs> we already have our, our grammar constructed on the way the prayer need to be said but god say come to me the way you are raw father i'm confused amen hey 
learn to say you are confused when you are really really confused before the lord lord i am confused i'm so tired i do not know what to do i just need your help amen several times i prayed that prayer amen in valleys and mountains and i kept wondering all these men great men that is giving us idea of messages and they're telling us that you're going to do one kind of gymnastic behavior before God. I can't want it. Is it the same God they are serving that I'm serving? Hallelujah. Because when I come to his presence, I can't find any word other than the word of submission to him. I can't find any word. We must learn how to behave childlike and be sincere before God. And one of the secrets of Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul was very open-minded. Very open-minded when God gives him secrets and ask him to reveal it, he reveal it. No hiding. There's no reservation. The man was ready to pray. I was the time he made a statement. He said, look, pray for me, brethren. It's not about the word of eloquence, the word of uh, knowledge of men that I preach the gospel. So pray for me that utterance might be given to me to preach the gospel. That's sad likeness. Hallelujah. So a man who is not shattered like, depends on his own skill to deliver God's word to people. We must learn how to say we are nothing. Jesus himself confirmed that in the book of John chapter 5 verse 10. John chapter 5 verse 10. He said, I can of my own do nothing. Everybody say that, I can of my own do nothing. And in the book of John chapter 15 from verse 1 we are told, you can do nothing without me. As a branch of a tree can't bear any fruit when it's disconnected from the real trunk. So our utterance before the Lord should be the one of simplicity that we invite God's passion. Hallelujah. Hey, hey, I will say, hey. God's passion is on under high invitation by childlikeness. God activates emptiness amen god doesn't like fullness <laughs> amen when we are already full of ourselves it's not going to work with god amen that's why many christians are taking too long journey before they are fully loaded with the anointing and they keep wondering i've been i've given my life for a long time and yet i don't have this anointing because god is still processing them until they are able to get to a level where they discover they are nothing God will not let the anointing come upon them. I mean, I'm talking about the anointing of holiness, not the anointing of in God's house. There are two types of vessel. Vessel unto honor and vessel what? Unto dishonor. I put myself under the spell of God that do not use me when I'm committed to sin. Since the day I got my, gave my life to Christ. And I thank God who has been helping me since then. If the anointing is heavily on me, you must be sure it's the holy anointing of God. It can't be anything else. Amen. Well, because everything about the anointing of God that is really from God, God uses somebody that is really a honorable vessel, you know that that anointing is sensitive to every little thing that goes around in that person. Hallelujah. That's the on your feet. Do not use me as a dishonorable vessel. Do not use me. I want to be dedicated in this time of Corona. In the time to enter into my door and pray to you. Look, 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 Lord, sanctify me and specially anoint me for a special touch in this time. Use me as honorable vessel to you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have declared. Have your seat. Number five. Christ in COVID disaster could mean God may be introducing tests to precede blessing. Amen. You know, the attitude of God when there's a big difficulty, challenges that you can't handle, might be God is trying to what? introduce a test because after the test that is definitely going to be a promotion ah you say why this sir 
yes sir yes ma'am the reason is that god gave abraham a very big promise abraham hold as thinking in age no hope of giving birth to any child but god said you are going to produce for me a seed a seed that will come from the womb of your wife that will be a blessing to the whole world and then when the seed came god said i need that seed to be sacrificed and god was not negotiating anything you know there was ishmael on ground and there's also israel on ground there's ishmael on ground sorry that's also isaac on ground two of them are on ground but god said take your child <laughs> your only child ah god is saying today take your work your career your gpa your only gpa what you try your most in your life bring it to my presence and sacrifice unto me what about that hallelujah what about god saying when somebody is already actually having difficulty in your home and you don't know who to run to what about god saying leave him alone and come to me and worship me right in my presence leave him in the hospital <laughs> hallelujah just talk to me hallelujah you know sometimes god decides to empty churches till today probably i'm not i'm not sure but i just have a feeling god emptying the churches and keeping the pastor alone there ministering to the bench <laughs> hallelujah because they say okay i need the old church to be sacrificed unto me what about that god has a plan amen nobody can determine and explain how god wants to reason nobody he says as far as ever away from the earth so is my thought far away from what from your thoughts god is not a man that he will lie not a, a son of man that he will repent god he said there's no such in the book of isaiah of his understanding so god can decide to say bring up your son what is your son today in your life that is so important to you so bring it up sacrifice unto me and when god saw the faithfulness of abraham <laughs> test everybody say test abraham lay his son on the altar and invoke god almighty to come out god not take the sacrifice he took the knife he wanted to call the child and the lord himself appeared amen everybody say the lord appeared and now i see that you fear god god witness against himself i see everybody see i see you fear god god gave abraham what he would not ordinarily give to any man a statement that is so expensive and costly now i know that you fear god imagine that hallelujah the other place I saw in the scripture where God testified so loudly <laughs> about a man was about Job. He said, Have you seen my servant Job? <laughs> God said, Now I know you fear God. He replaced that sacrifice with something else. Hey, my friend, this time may be a test for us, may be a test of our commitment. Are we truly committed to God? If you have a situation that is happening to us that can take all our attention we, when god whisper will we be able to still hear god whispering you know the voice of god sometimes is a small still voice in the midst of noise god is a jealous god so test sometimes can be introduced every faith every promise given will be tested as a child of god we need to expect God to test us. Hallelujah. We have to expect God to come into our business uninvited. Once we invited him initially and surrender everything to him, then he began to come uninvited. Now, listen carefully. Let me explain that very well. When we decide not to invite God, that's okay. God will not come. Let me, let me paraphrase that. When we decide not to submit to God, God understands that he will not come. But once we submit to him, like jesus made a confession in john 5 10 god what next god will do is this god will start inviting himself uninvited 
that's why you see your business sometimes get messy so when god is in a place there's always going to be a fire burning the bush hey my friend i will say hey fire must be around and what's the work of fire the work of fire is to refine amen everybody say refine god is allowing that fire to come look when fire is burning what what happens it comes with pain hallelujah praise the lord heat everybody say heat so god bring that fire in the situation to be able to refine us when we allow him when we submit ourselves to him he invites himself to our business and that's why we see our business sometimes we can't understand the path that business is taking because god is in it the finger of god is in it god will not gather on these scatters he doesn't that's his attitude hallelujah that's why people are afraid of him they're afraid amen i hope that that that, that fear is a fear of reverend rather than fear of terror people don't want to be committed to god because they know that the next step amen let me tell you after you finish your prayer sometimes the next thing that will happen is to be led to the wilderness to be tempted of the devil is that the next thing after you've committed to pray come on ask me on your feet right now so lord jesus make me understand how to relate with you make in this corona COVID 19 help me to relate deeper than i thought give me the courage to stand for you to relate with you nobody got the explanation thank you father in jesus name we have declared have your seat very important to suck that in with prayers very important not just speak the word we need to stamp it up with prayer hallelujah amen hallelujah. say up to now you have not asked anything ask till your joy is what full so can you imagine after he's been tested 40 days i mean he has fasted 40 days and 49 <laughs> the next thing <laughs> that he has to experience is temptation man really i thought that after somebody's committed to prayer not eating anything 40 days and 49 <laughs> the message should be provided food and sit down and comforted <laughs> and be led to the comfortable place sleep have enough rest right and miracles are happening but god said look man i need to test you first <laughs> hallelujah the act of god in that situation was god testing jesus the act of the devil in that situation was the devil tempting jesus you have to know how to convert your te temptation to tests we need to give god the room enough we need to give god room enough to see his tests in what we call temptation hallelujah praise the lord god saw that as, i mean jesus saw that as a test he went with the leadership of the holy spirit amen what is leading us today sometimes we don't want to get out of our bubble amen i said that on friday we are too much in, in self-belief we don't want to touch anyone we don't want to influence and impact anybody we just want to stay in our own in our own shell and take over ourselves but god wants us to get out of there amen and take i will not call it a risk amen take step of faith everybody step of faith step of faith has to do with inconvenience amen if one must love love is inconvenient very very inconvenient step of faith is affecting people positively without thinking otherwise without thinking the other side without second guessing as paul said i'm poured out like an offering like a drink offering so they are drinking paul every day everybody's drinking paul <laughs> what are they drinking in paul the overflowing of the holy ghost you know? like a river anyone in me you know whatever i put in you is like a river what river of living water so they are drinking river of living water in what in the substrate called paul amen sometimes we need to make ourselves substrates everybody says substrate side like substrate that god can use to bless others hey everybody say hey you are the light of the world the city set upon the hill cannot be hidden my friend sometimes we don't stretch to foot our heart because we second guess ourselves a lot 
and actually we second guess Christ. Second guess his power. We second guess his anointing. And that is dangerous. Hallelujah. God wants us to get out of our body and stand to help others. God doesn't need anybody's help. The anointing doesn't need anybody's help. The anointing is capable by himself. Everybody say anointing is capable by himself. You don't need over explanation about the anointing. There is no need to over explain what he reveals. Just say whatever he asks you to say and keep whatever he asks you to keep. Over explaining God can turn a one to be a false prophet. Amen. Only two of God should be the one who speak exactness. Amen. Correctness, distinction. Not talking here and there. No stories. It's about delivery. Like a prophet. Amen. Hallelujah. Have you ever seen that's why the Ramoshon Toria Kalaba? That's some of your faith. Rasoto Romo Koshande. Open my eyes to go out and preach the gospel. I'm not allowed this COVID-19 to tie me down. Open my eyes to be your oracle at this time. Christ in Corona means representing God everywhere. Confidently. Being under afraid. Open my eyes. In Jesus' name, we have declared. Have your seat. We have about a few minutes to. Few minutes. Hallelujah. Just give me a few minutes. Amen. Hallelujah. Hmm. Everybody say, hmm. When God is in action, God doesn't need our excesses need our child likeness cry unto him submit unto him speak what he spoke to you release yourself unto him and it, it, it makes the training faster when we are very very submissive when I submissive so my half 10 years spent in faith and it's still like a baby you know Paul was addressing the Galatians and said oh foolish Galatians the way you are doing we were taught you why are you moving from the spirit to the flesh how can somebody move from the spirit to the flesh you move from the flesh Christ took you from the flesh and put in the spirit close to God and now you are moving from the spirit it's only one demarcation the flesh here the little tongue and engage you with the flesh turn someone to be somebody else hallelujah Christ in Corona mean God may be introducing tests to precede blessing. Hallelujah. First Peter chapter 4, verse 12 to 14. Beloved, do not think it strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you as though some strange thing happened to you. That's what is happening right now. The thing, but rejoice to the extent that you partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may also be glad with exceeding joy. Verse 14. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you for the spirit of glory and of God rest upon you. On their part, he is blasphemed, but on your part, he is glorified. Rise upon your feet this morning. So Christ in Corona means Christ trying to test us. Christ asking us to give all that he gave to us. Christ wants to check our attitude towards commitment to him. Rising Corona means we need to learn to cry upon God because God is trying to get our attention. I want us to speak to God this morning. I've heard your word. More than what I've heard today, may your spirit interpret for me. By the time I leave here, my life will never remain the same from today. I will not go and join chorus with people. 
Paul said, he said that the unbelieving generation, they are living in the vacancy of their mind. So we have no vacancy in our mind. We have the Spirit of God in our heart. God explain to me better than this as I get home I will no longer go back there and start disengaging you Lord I accept what you accept I want to behave the way you will behave I want to shout your praise in this time of pandemic let's open our mouth and talk to God like a baby talk to God shout like a let God know that we are interested in his acts at this period thank you father what else can we do lord after all these things if you are not for us people will be against us because you are for us who can be against us so we are set today to sacrifice sacrifice our convenience to worship you sacrifice our comfort to appreciate you in this time Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, we have declared. Mighty God of heaven, we thank you this morning for the entrance of your word, giving light and understanding to the simple. I thank you for you coming by yourself and expressing yourself to us. Thank you that this word has done what it ought to do. I pray that as we seed has been sown today, this seed will grow. We become giant tree bearing precious fruits unto eternity thank you is anyone today in this place that is under oppression and torment and fear and capitulation i ask the anointing right now to set such a person free thank you jesus christ in Jesus' name, we have declared. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.